Hello, Ovesen.net. Um, this is uh, 2020, and uh, the first video of this year is uh, about a little bit more modern computer than usual. So it's been a while since my last video, but um, that's because of the holidays, and uh, now it's. Uh, 2020 and I have to say a happy new year. So this is a compact uh, LTE Elite 475CXL and it is a 486 computer with uh, 16 megabytes of RAM. I said megabytes not gigabytes. This machine uh, is from a line of uh, laptop computers uh, introduced by compact in 1989. And the LTE was uh, among the first notebooks made. Uh, it's based on the Intel x86 architecture and the first model was a uh, 9.55 MHz Intel 8086 CPU. No, this model which is the LTE Elite 475 CXL was introduced in 1994. It has a 8486DX4 CPU running at 75 MHz and it has a 9.5 inch TFT color screen with a resolution of 640 x 480. The RAM and the hard disk size depended on the model purchase, but this one has 16 MB and 810 MB hard drive. These early machines did not have USB, uh, in fact USB was not available at that time. USB was introduced uh, in 1996. As you can see the machine is quite uh, thick compared to uh, today's standards, so it's uh, five and a half centimeters. So my plan for this video is to fix it up and clean it up and uh, both outside and inside and uh, as you can see, it's uh, quite yellowed, uh, at least the keyboard. On the front of the machine, you have the floppy drive. And on this side, you have the battery, which you can uh, remove if you want. There's a button here on the side, which has to be pressed down. It's really hard now. Okay, there it comes. And the battery is, of course, dead. And on this side you have the hard drive, which can be accessed like this. Just have to open this, uh, this hatch and then you can pull out the hard drive. The hard drive is uh, one uh, no, sorry, it's a 810 megabyte, uh, and I repeat megabyte, not gigabyte. So this is an uh, order of uh, magnitude of 1000 to 2000 times smaller than uh, what we have today. On the back side of the machine you have access to some uh, ports, like this, uh, I guess it's for the docking station, and if you open this hatch you have a keyboard mouse connector, PS2, uh, and this is printer port. Uh, not sure what this is, this uh, is VGA, and uh, it also has a built-in power supply, so you can connect directly to the mains power. The underside of the machine is a bit dirty, it lacks one rubber feet and uh, uh, also it has some labeling and some writing with the name of the previous owner, so I'm hiding that for now and also it has uh, access to memory expansion. And it seems it already got the memory expansion. The machine has a built-in mouse or a trackball like this with uh, two buttons on the back side of the machine. Uh, I tested it before and this one works uh, very badly now so I'm gonna fix that. 
All right, next I'm gonna screw this machine up and um, disassemble it as much as I can in order to clean the individual parts and uh, get access to the motherboard and clean the fans and everything. Uh, the machine is held together by some very special screws, but uh, I think I can just use a flat screwdriver. Yeah, that will work. The underside has uh, five screws, same type, so remove those. Okay, that was the screw, so um, how do you separate this and open it I don't know it looks to be uh, uh, between here maybe if I open it up all right yeah that seems to help so I don't want to use too much force um, and perhaps break it, but uh, I'll gently try and pry here if it's some kind of tabs holding it. So now I need to get access to the uh, connector for the LCD screen so I can loosen it without damaging it. So the ribbon cable for the LCD screen has this um, uh, metal uh, ring around it. So anyway, I'll gently try to pull up the contact here and release it. That's not good. That's better. Okay. All right. The screen is free. Next is the keyboard has the same kind of screws no problem there thing is that all these uh, screws have different lengths so uh, hopefully I can remember which one to put where when I assemble it again all right if you slide it back like this and then pull it up backwards it, it came loose and then I just pry up the contact upwards yeah. That's it. well this is the inside of the machine pretty simple design CPU 8486 it has the built-in power supply with the output of 18.5 uh, volts and uh, 3 amps max. But what is this? Uh, looks like a small battery, I don't know. Just have to remove it. Yeah, it's actually a battery. 7.2 volts. 
This is probably the battery that uh, keeps the motherboard alive and uh, the clock ticking. And uh, I saw a warning on the screen that uh, that the BIOS uh, was reset or something like that. So this probably need to be uh, replaced. It's uh, quite dusty inside. So um, anyway, I'm gonna uh, disassemble uh, the rest and. Uh, sit back with only plastic parts. There's a few screws on the motherboard. So also I removing the floppy drive. Same type of connector, just pry it upwards and then you free the tension on the uh, ribbon cable. This isn't even uh, screwed onto the motherboard, it's just sitting loose there. So there's the label, it says uh, 1994 Compaq. So this is a 25 years old machine. This is probably the memory area. Couple of screws there too. Finally, the power supply has a few screws. I think this is it. Yeah. The board still seem uh, very stuck on this side, so I think maybe I have to remove this uh, daughter card here. So let's try to remove this card, it seems to be like uh, the sound card for the computer. Okay. Yeah. Finally, I think the motherboard is completely free. Just have to find the right trick to lure it up because it's pretty stuck down in the plastic. So I think you can remove the CPU card on this machine. Just want to try gently and lift it up. Yeah. All right. Okay, this was my fear. You have to unscrew all of these nuts here. cable for uh, the different uh, LEDs in the front. I didn't notice that until now. That seemed to be just a regular push uh, contact so I just gently pull it out. Yes. That's it. So the fan and this uh, external uh, I don't know, power contact is still attached to the metal frame, so I have to try to loosen those. And the fan has a contact, so I can disconnect it. Yeah! Motherboard free! 
So then I can just lift up uh, the metal case. Yeah. Okay. Finally, I'll remove the lead stripe here. So while the plastic parts are soaking in the hot water bath, I just uh, for the screen use this uh, GIF Universal, which is a generic uh, cleaner for windows and uh, mirrors. Just spray over and let it uh, work for a couple of minutes. So now the plastics looks pretty clean. I did mention uh, the need for retro brighting, but I think this is the original color because uh, I removed this um, sticker here and the color underneath is the same. So uh, I think this is the original color. I removed the small battery from the motherboard and I, it, should be 7.2 volts and I thought I might try to measure it now to see okay it actually it actually holds 8 volts so um, there seems to be life in this battery after all so now I'm gonna take a look at the keyboard which seems to be in a good condition it is a bit dirty and I can see a lot of hair and dust underneath the keycaps. So I start by removing the keycaps and they seem to be coming off quite easily just by using the fingers. So, And there's not uh, much to see, it's just a simple mechanism. So no springs and ed ed anything and that's good. Some of the larger keys has these uh, metal bars that uh, are reinforcing them. So. Okay, that's it. A lot of dust and shit, but. Uh, no, actually not that much, to be honest. So the keycaps uh, has been uh, cleaned and dried and uh, uh, as you can see they are a bit yellowed on the front if you s compare to the back side so uh, I was thinking about uh, doing uh, some retro brighting of just the uh, keycaps and I'm gonna use my regular method which involves uh, sous vide water bath and vac vacuum bags. So my method for uh, retro brighting uh, keycaps is to put them in a sealed bag like a vacuum bag used for uh, conserving or preparing food then I use this 12% uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide cream and put a generous amount into the bag Then mix it around, of course. Then I use my vacuum pump to uh, remove all the air from the bag.
So this makes a, a airtight and sealed bag. So I have started my sous vide water bath and set it to 56 degrees. And now I'm gonna put the bags inside it. So I just have to make sure the whole bag is down into the water to get the consistent temperature. And then I just leave it here for a yeah, couple of hours, two, three hours. The motherboard looks very nice and clean, it's just a little bit dust, so just blow away some of the dust. As I mentioned, the machine came with a built-in trackpad uh, with the mouse buttons on the back side. And uh, when I tried it first time, it was really bad. It didn't move all directions, so next I'm gonna take a look at this. So this is an, like an old mouse with a ball inside that's rolling. You just turn the cover like that from the little holes. And then you can take out the, the ball itself. So what happens over time with these uh, physical uh, mouse devices is that they gather uh, dirt on the rolling wheels inside uh, and I can clearly see some dirt uh, stuck onto this wheel here. So I just spray some alcohol in it and uh, let it uh, work for a while and then use a cotton swab to try to clean the wheel, rolling wheel. Uh, looking much better now but um, I think there is a problem with one of the wheels. As you can see, this one is is uh, spring loaded, so it, it, when you press it, it comes out. However, this one, it just fall into the groove and doesn't spring out again. So, so I think I maybe have to uh, open this up if I'm gonna fix this. All right, the next up is the floppy drive. And I didn't test it uh, when I tested the machine, so I don't know if it's working, but um, anyway, I'm gonna open it and clean the uh, inside and the clean the drive head. Uh, it has two screws on the top and two on the side here. And I, these are really small screws, so I'm using this uh, mobile repair kit I got. Then you have to lift this uh, tab here just to get it over. There you go. Then I want to remove the lid because it is quite dirty and I want to clean it. And uh, here's a little spring here that holds it uh, shut, so I have to be careful. Just bend the, the lid inwards and up to free it from the hole. And then the spring goes out. I'm not gonna disassemble it more than this, but this gives me access to blow some uh, compressed air, to blow some dust away. The drive actually looks quite nice and clean. I just use a cotton swab with some uh, alcohol and uh, even the drive rail for the stepper motor is quite clean. So I don't think this has been used a lot. Finally, I use a clean cotton swab with some alcohol and just carefully rub it between the heads. Just turn it around a couple of times and then I, I switch to the dry side of the cotton swab and dry it off. I use a little bit of machine oil on a cotton swab just to lubricate the, the drive shaft for the stepper motor. So that's all I'm gonna do with the floppy drive. I'm putting the lid 
uh, front lid back into place if I can manage to find the small holes all right there we go yeah that's perfect Okay, <coughs> the key, uh, keys has been sitting in the water uh, now for three hours and I think it's uh, ready to remove and check it out. So it's hard to tell without a good comparison but uh, I think they look very nice now. They look uh, a bit brighter than before, same color on both sides. So that's the keyboard and I think it looks fantastic. Looks like new actually. So um, pretty pleased with that. So I'm opening the screen after all, since I want to take a look at the trackball here. Okay, so that's uh, one screen inside. So I want to take out the, the trackball just to inspect and see if I can do anything with the uh, wheel that didn't uh, come out. trackball is a single unit that is um, hooked up with a small ribbon cable which I'm disconnecting now so I, I want to open up this uh, container for the two wheels uh, so that I can take them out and clean them properly there are two small screws on the back side here There it is, and there's a small uh, spring, <clears throat> probably gotten loose. So there's a wheel with a little uh, rotator that are uh, being registered by the electronics when the trackball is moving. And there's some dirt, so I'm gonna clean this properly. So that's the little spring that's supposed to keep the wheel uh, spring loaded into the mechanism and uh, I think it's broken off the one end. So I cleaned up uh, the wheels and uh, they actually have some corrosion and uh, the spring on one of the wheels uh, actually was corroded off so I'm not able to fix this and the other wheel has a problem too as you can see some of the teeth are missing on this one so or they are bent back so i'll try to bend them in the right position again i don't know if you can see but uh, the spring here is it's corroded in the end so it seems to have had some uh, some uh, water or moisture so I think I managed to fix uh, both the spring uh, by just winding uh, the spring around uh, one turn and thus uh, lengthening the, the end that was corroded off so of course it's not that strong now but that should uh, hold so now the spring uh, 
goes over the axle and uh, as you can see it keeps the wheel falling back so I finally managed to uh, put the track ball module uh, back together and um, hopefully it's working better now so I'm gonna uh, put it back inside the screen here thing I'm gonna do now is to blow the, the fan free from uh, dust. Alrighty, that's it for uh, cleaning and fixing this machine. I'm gonna assemble it now and uh, hopefully I can get it uh, back together again. Uh, yeah. All right, I have assembled the machine and it's booting up now. Uh, so uh, I connected a PS2 mouse, so hopefully it will work better than the uh, trackball. The machine is running uh, Windows 98, uh, although I think this came with Windows 95. In, uh, One thing I want to test before I uh, complete this machine is uh, the floppy drive. So I have a floppy disk with some images. Oh, it's uh, making quite a noise. So the floppy drive doesn't seem to work very well. As you can hear, it's a bad noise. So I opened up the machine and the floppy drive again and uh, clearly it's not working because uh, the disk is not spinning so uh, I have to take a look on this floppy drive but uh, that's gonna be in another episode. Uh, this video is uh, starting to get long enough and as you can hear it makes a terrible noise. All right, this was a fun experience. Uh, first time I have serviced a laptop like this. Um, yeah, it was a trip down the memory lane. Uh, so the floppy does not work. I have to fix that. And the battery is dead. So I don't know if I can find a replacement for that. I'll try and search a bit. All right, a little Mario. So with this I say thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hope you see to see you next time, bye bye.